Hello and welcome. Do you love dogs as much as I do? This dog is stitched on one piece of fabric. I'm using a piece of cloth that I created in my last video using watercolors. And it was so pretty that I decided not to add any collage and just stitch right on top. I've used one of my dog templates from my dog and cat set and I've stitched heavily in many colors, bringing this sweet little brown dog to life. I also bring in the color wheel and discuss how a color wheel can be used to choose colors that really help the piece to pop. So join me step by step as I create this slow stitched little dog. Let's get started. This dog is from my set of two dogs and two cats. Here's one cat and a puppy and a dog and a cat sitting. So that's the set and I'm using this one today. When you look at this template, especially the tail, it would be very hard to cut this out of fabric. Possible for sure, but I have another way to use these templates that doesn't involve cutting out the dog and placing it onto the slow stitched work. So to start this project, I'm using this piece of fabric that I created in a previous video using watercolor. And I'll link to that if you wanna have a look at how I created this fabric. I also created one in blue in that video. I'm gonna use this one today. I have a piece of felt. I'm using black, white, or another color would be absolutely fine. This piece of felt is slightly bigger than my piece of fabric. So I'm placing this piece of fabric on the felt. If there were any other pieces that I wanted to collage at this point, I could add them, but I'm just going to use this one piece of fabric to start. I'm going to put my template aside for now, and that's gonna come in in the next step. The first step is to add some slow stitching to this piece. For this first pass of slow stitching, I would recommend choosing a color that's neutral. And by neutral, I mean that clo most closely matches the background fabric. This fabric has more than one color on it, but I've chosen this yellow because I feel it will read as a neutral. It will be there for sure, but it won't contrast very much with the fabric. And that's my goal for this, fir for this first layer of stitching. I'm using two strands of embroidery floss and I'm going to start by making my quilter's knot where I take the end of the thread and I point it towards the needle. I grab it, wrap it a few times, hold on to that wrapping and pull all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm going to make slow stitching lines across the piece. I'm going to do them in this direction, but they could also be done in the other direction. Either one's fine. So I'm gonna pull my needle through and I take my first stitch. That's got me started. I want to also mention too, if having straight lines is important, then you could definitely mark with a fabric marker. One of these air erasable markers would be great for this. I'm going to just eyeball it and not worry too much about being perfectly straight. I'm going to stack stitches onto my needle. I'm going to move across this piece. Then I will turn and work my way back. So now I'm going to go under, so I'm at the end. Pull my needle through and make sure it's not too tight. And I'm going to come back out and work my way back across. I'm going to keep moving my way 
all the way across this piece. When this thread runs out, I'm gonna re-thread and continue working until the entire piece is covered. So here are my slow stitching lines on this piece. Here's what it looks like on the back. You can see where I hopped up on the rows. I ended my thread and began again. You can see that the fabrics got those wonderful ripples that the slow stitching gives it. And I just want to say at this point, if you look at this, if you make one, if you make a square yourself and you look at this at this point and you love it and it makes you happy, slow stitching is for you because this is the basis of slow stitching. Straight lines creating bumps and ripples in the fabric. Very simple and very beautiful. This is only the first stage, but already these straight stitches have added so much, but we're gonna keep going and we're gonna do more. So let's move to the next step. If you've seen my other videos, what I've shown with these templates is, a, is creating a piece that's then applied to the collage. So that would involve taking a piece of fabric, for example, this piece, tracing the shape onto the fabric, removing the template, and then cutting out what you've traced. For this dog, these feet here, the legs, the tail, it's very, very fine, thin pieces when you think about cutting them out. Definitely possible and doable, especially if you use interfacing, like in my Cat in the Moonlight project. But here we're gonna do something different. I'm going to trace this dog onto this piece and then use stitching to create our shape. You could use a pencil for this project, keeping in mind that it would be permanent. Any marks you made would be permanent. You could use an air erasable marker. You could also use a water erasable marker, although I wouldn't recommend it in this case because the rubbing may disturb the stitching. The other option, what I'm going to use, is one of these friction pens. This is a heat erasable. Some quilters use this pen. Other quilters have used it and been disappointed because what happens is when they wash their quilt, the marks come back. This has happened to some people. In this case, this isn't gonna be washed and I'm not worried about that. And I like the precision I can get with the friction pen. So if I hit this piece with an iron after it has the mark from this pen on it, it's going to disappear. So I'm gonna place the dog where I want her to be and I'm just going to trace it. These friction pens come in many colors. I happen to have a blue one, but you could use red or green or whatever color worked. And because this fabric's been stitched and it has these waves in it and it's a bit bumpy, it ends up being not a really beautiful looking line. It's just the nature of this project. But the main important part is that I have this general shape of the dog created. So now I'm done with my template. I can put that away and I can get to stitching. So the next thing to decide is what color the dog should be. I'm going to choose black. I think a brown would be really nice here, like maybe a chocolate lab or something, but also even white or yellow. The first thing I'm gonna do is outline the shape of the dog. And to do that, I'm going to stitch right on top of the lines that I traced. 
I'm using two strands of embroidery floss. So this outline is going to be a nice thickness. And when I go around the smaller areas, I'm gonna take smaller stitches so that I can get around the corners. So I'm just gonna work my way around, stitching right on top of the lines that I made. I'm using the back stitch. I think this makes a nice solid line. I just have a, the head to do of the dog here and then my outline will be complete. So here's the outline of my dog. At this point, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to add an ear. This is optional. But I thought that would add a little bit of character to the dog. The other option is to add a little nose if you want to. So I've put my ear in and I still have that little mark on the nose, but I think I'm not going to add it right now. I have the marks that they're pretty much covered. There's a tiny bit showing in a couple places. So I'm going to go over to my iron and I'm gonna hit this with heat. Now, because I really like the waves from the slow stitching, I don't wanna flatten this out. So I'm just gonna let my iron hover over top and that heat should be enough to erase the little marks from this friction pen. So I've hit this with the iron and there aren't any more pen marks that I can see. So now it's time to stitch the dog. And I've chosen a golden brown color. And I'm going to start with the ear and then fill the rest of the dog's body in. I've added a few passes back and forth in this brown color. And whenever you're doing stitching, what's a little bit heavier, it pulls in the fabric. You can see it's pulling in a little bit here, not a lot. So to remedy that, you can run your hands across. That helps with some of it, but it's going, it's going to happen. It's just the nature of stitching. So now I'm going to hop away from this part and work on the background and then come back. And I'm gonna work that way, back and forth, background, dog, background, dog, to spread out the stitching. There's still going to be puckering that's going to happen. And that's something that I'm gonna celebrate and I'm going to accept as part of it. And it's actually quite beautiful. I'm going to start with this pink color. I have two strands, which is what I'm working with throughout this two strands of the black and this brown color. And I'm going to do some stitching in the lower half with this pink. More straight stitches, this time up and down, and I'm angling them. So I've added three rows of stitching in this pink color and I really like it and I was thinking what would make it even pop more is to add a darker shade as well. So I've pulled out this color that's just slightly darker than this and I'm going to come back in and add some more stitches in this color. You can see in the bottom row 
just that slight difference in color. It's heavier stitching because I've gone in between and added more here and here. So it does make a difference and the color difference is very slight, but it really adds a dimension and a texture that I really think is good. So I'm going to continue and do that to the rest of these spots. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to move up here and do some stitching, just again to spread out the stitching so that it's not all in one spot and there isn't a pulling in. So I will finish this and then I'm going to hop up here and bring in these two colors in the top area. So this color is a little bit brighter and lighter than the background, but also still very close. Just added some X's. I'm going to stop here now and switch to this more golden color and add a little bit of stitching here. Then I'll go back to our doggy and I'll add some more of this topaz brown color. What I'm doing with my stitching is trying to follow the lines that exist anatomically. This being the sort of hip and leg and following that way. And I'll do the same thing here and try and follow the way that the fur goes, the way that the body moves. I'm not trying to do precise stitching. There's some embroidery out there that's just absolutely beautiful, capturing feathers, capturing fur. And that's usually done with long and short stitch where one color blends into the other you really it flows together you can have curves you can have contours what I'm doing here is really something that's more primitive something that's simpler and um, I'm not going for anything that's photorealistic I really like a folk art feel to what I do and at the same time um, I like to inject a little bit of reality or the hint of it by adding contours when I'm doing, for example, bird's feathers or bird's head, and in this case, fur. So I'm just going to continue adding these straight stitches and paying attention to the direction that I'm stitching. So now I just fill it in. I came in with black and defined the front leg from the back leg added an eye and a little nose and I'm continuing to stitch in the background. The way I chose the colors for the background and the dog were really sort of an intuitive choice but I want to also show how you can make similar choices based on a color wheel. If you look at this color wheel in comparison to this piece, if I choose this brown from the yellow orange family as the dog color and I use the triad part of the color wheel, you can see that the other colors in the triad are red violet, which is very similar to the color that I've chosen as an accent color. And the other one is a blue green, which is the color family that I've used for the blue in the background. So using a color wheel is one way that can help you to decide a color. If you have one color that you know you're working with, you can find other colors that go with it. Another option would have been if I knew I had yellow and orange in this piece, I could have used colors that are near each other, beside each other on the color wheel. And I could have used a yellow green with an orange and a red orange, or I could have used more reds and pinks with the yellow and the yellow orange. So a color wheel is really helpful to get ideas about the color that you want to use. So the final step in completing this piece is adding a border. I think what I'm going to do is 
bring back in the color I used for the dog as well as black. I'm using blanket stitch and I've gone around and done a few rows in brown and I'm starting to add some black. So I think I want to add a little bit more black and finish off the border. I did add more to the border and a few cute little buttons and a couple more pops of color. The piece still has those beautiful ripples that you get from slow stitching and it hasn't really pulled in or warped too much from all this heavy stitching. I really liked working on this sweet little dog. It's different than what I usually do with birds and it made me think so much about how much I love dogs. I've had dogs all my life and I love them so much. I've never actually had a little brown dog like this. But now here he is in my studio. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, happy stitching.